Hey, I just spilled bourbon on my uh, census form. They'll still take it though. They just want people to participate, I'm sure. Hello, Joel. Just made a, a oopsie over here. Hello, Austin. Hello, Harmon. Adam. All the beautiful people. There's Todd. That's who I needed. To a need. Adam. Spilled bourbon on my census form. Hi. Howdy. <laughs> I didn't know if we were going to get connected there for a minute. It was a little odd. It's like it's like a David Lynch movie there for a moment. Oh, okay. Uh, Ross is only popping in for a sec. I, he's, I, I don't even want to read what the rest is. He just wants to brag about what he's doing. <laughs> whatever, whatever that's oh so too important to watch this important stream. No, he's watching. He's watching the host for the first time, which is the uh, uh, follow up to uh, Stephanie Meyer's uh, popular Twilight series. Yes, not not near as uh, not near as popular as that series, but uh, you know, it 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 stands on its own two feet. And they only made the one the one film in the series, so uh, good luck with that, Ross. It's actually a prequel to uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, I mean everything is. Everything's just a build up to the next kinky part of your life. Every, everything leads to rich people fucking you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Seeing a tad of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian. Whatever. We all got twelve hundred dollars. I got my twelve hundred dollars today. The rich people love me. <laughs> I got mine today too. Yay. That's why. That's why I'm drinking fancy rosé wine. Yeah. See, Ross, it just notified notified us that that uh, you joined. You asshole. Sassy me. And Sass and Todd Holman. Todd Holman didn't do nothing. I got your bag. Thank you, buddy. What's, there, what's everybody got going on tonight? Hey, Misty. Uh, yeah, as, as always the. This forum is yours. This is this is not our. This is not only our healing journey. This is your healing journey, as well. It's a healing journey for you. Yes. Yeah. So please bombard us with with questions and and, and subjects and and what's happening in your lives because that's that's what we need. And we will. And we will. As as they say riff on it yeah because todd and i have not been affected by the pandemic whatsoever a lot of people you know have a lot of a lot of tumultuous things happening in their lives but yeah okay we can't go to the restaurant don't mean you can't build a lean-to outside one that's what todd and i did at arby's that's right that's a goddamn that's the nicest lean-to in paducah right there right. hey i'm not i'm not going through this shit without my beef and cheddar hell no we got a question in the er question box. Is Adam pandemic without curly fries? Fuck that. Adam uh, Adam wants to know about the first albums, movies, uh, theater we heard, saw that made you feel like you were on something and uh, changed your path. Oh Lord. Who Lord? That is a that is a that is a fantastic question. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I mean, uh, there, I, I'm, I feel. I feel like this answer should, uh, you know, be. I mean, the most influential, in many ways, uh, not music. I don't know. I'm a lifelong Prince fan, but I don't think he changed my path. Um, I would say uh, Prince kind of. Prince kind of did change my path in a way. Um, I remember, uh, I remember the first time I listened to uh, the first Prince album I ever bought on cassette was 1999, and th there's a lot of there's a lot of naughty language on that album. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was six weeks ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, 
yeah, that was sort of that was like the first time you know where, where? I heard uh, I heard somebody like you know just blatantly saying, "Hey, let's fuck." Yeah, uh, I don't I don't know that changed me as a as a, I mean I definitely you know I've listened to a lot of the punk rock. I uh, I remember I, I do remember seeing Elvis Costello's famous uh, appearance on Saturday Night Live where he played the song he wasn't supposed to, um, and that was a that was a big thing with me. Also, this is kind of embarrassing, but you know what? This is a healing journey, and honesty is important. I think I was a freshman in high school, and uh, the Baptist church that I was forced to attend had a youth group from out of state come in and put on a show. It was like one of those, it was like up, up, up with people, but it was up with Jesus or something like that. I don't know. There's a lot of singing and prancing about and all about the Lord. Yeah. Little dab. So, uh, and uh, we had one of the youths stay at our house because they all stayed at church members' houses and everything. And I actually got the cool kind of punk rock Jesus guy. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, they they've got to go somewhere where they can steal your uh, medication. Oh yeah, it's a it's a huge scam. I mean, that's a, they just they raid your medicine cabinet and then uh, you know sell it on the street. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't remember the guy's name. But he, uh, we were we were just sitting there in my room, and he looked at me and he goes, "Have you ever heard of the Smiths?" <laughs> And at that point, I had not heard of the Smiths, and so he uh, he broke out a cassette copy of uh, I believe it was Meat Is Murder, and that set me on a different path. And th and that's that's when he revealed to you that um, that he was a time traveler from the future, and he's there to tell you to not listen to the Smiths because Morrissey's a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> If you heard of the Smiths, well, don't listen to them because the lead singers are racist. <laughs> no, I don't. Like early, early on, I remember my my cousin, and this was like I had no idea of beyond radio. Like there was music out there, and I want to say I was in like fourth grade. My sister's on here, by the way. Hello, sister. Um, but my cousin uh played the Violent Femmes for me, and that was the first like. Outside of the norm music I heard, and that was that was mind blowing. And then I've I've always been a person to seek out music since then. I mean, Fugazi Fugazi is going to be my most influential band, like musically and the way they they view the, 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 way, the way other people and, and treat themselves. Yeah, uh, as we've discussed uh, at length, uh, also another another big uh, another big life changing band for me was uh, REM. Yeah, uh, and and I saw Joel said Parliament Funkadelic. Uh, Joel, I think you've misheard the question. It's not what what you, were you listening to the first time you tried cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> Misty says Caius and the Doors. Very. Very similar bands. <laughs> both both leads both lead singers uh, died when their heart exploded in a bathtub in Paris. Yeah, I think I think we might have talked about the Doors at one. Point, like I, I I loved the Doors when I was a kid and didn't know what good music was. Then now they are one of my least favorite bands ever. But I was like a big Doors fan when I was a kid. Oh, me too. Yeah, I went. I went. I think. I think everybody who's into rock and roll goes through a Doors phase. And then I think. I think. Uh, I think it was when I saw the famous uh, Kids in the Hall sketch with uh, um, the one that Bruce McCullough does, where he's in the the guy in the record store, and he's like, "You haven't listened to the Doors," and I was like, "Yeah, they're kind of ridiculous." Kind of goofy. Hello, Alex. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I don't know. It's, it's harder. It's harder to say what what that kind of influential thing would be in the movie. I mean, it'd be something similar. It would. It would probably. It would be something like like indie. Uh, some some kind of indie movie that told. I mean, of course, seeing like Reservoir Dogs and uh, Pulp Fiction. That was, I mean, that was a big 
big but there i mean there there was definitely like a lot of just seeking things outside of the the whatever is you know the the popular because there's there's great stuff you just sometimes have to dig for it yeah um you mentioned pulp fiction i think uh, uh people who might not have been around at the time forget that pulp fiction was like a fucking atomic bomb going off it I mean, it didn't just change like the way people watch it. It changed movies it, for it, we had to deal with for like 10 years after that, all of these Pulp Fiction wannabe Tarantino wannabe movies. Everybody wanted to make a hip crime film and they were all awful. Yeah. Missy says Days and Confused too. Linklater was making a lot of great movies, still makes great movies back then. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and of course, you know, as far as bands go, the, you know, Hollywood vampires hugely influential it's mostly johnny depp's bass stylings and his scarves god oh, oh, damn it <laughs> like okay cory cory take it it's too dark cory it, it's scaring me take it down i can't look at it yeah uh austin saw layer cake in high school and uh Quickly realized he had no one to discuss it with. What? What's? Did you go? Where did he? Did you go to Gray County or Marshall County? I can't remember. Layer cake is fantastic. Yeah. I'll, God, you're young, Austin. Yeah. Layer layer cake is an amazing flick. If you haven't seen, I'll tell you, uh, Corey. I'll uh, I'll tell you a very influential movie on me. It came out my. Uh, of course, there were lots of there were lots of movies I saw on HBO back in the day, like when I was in grade school and middle school. That you know. And stuff I rented on VHS and everything. But uh, my senior year of high school, Platoon came out. And I went to see that in the theater. And Platoon blew my fucking mind. I, I was obsessed with that movie for about a year. See, the, the one uh, my best friend and I growing up with, is, I mean, this is similar, but uh, Full Metal Jacket was like uh, the, one, the one that we watched over and over again. And then that, you know, of course, led me to find more Kubrick stuff, which blew my mind of course that's the, that's the thing it's uh it it's kind of fun sometimes to kind of figure out like the thing that started you on the road and then all the other things you saw on that road like i said you, you see full metal jacket like i saw a platoon that led me to uh rent apocalypse now because i had never seen it and then you know you just Find your way through all of this stuff and find really cool shit. Deer Hunter also, Joel, yes, fantastic. Uh, the set, like Deer Hunter, Platoon, Full Metal Jack. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, I, I mean, Apocalypse Now, I would have never watched as a kid. Nor would I have watched Deer Hunter as a kid. Uh, and then, you know, my sister says Goodfellas. Joel says Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. That, that, I mean, I enjoyed that, too. And I enjoyed Snatch a whole lot, but goddamn Guy Ritchie went went to hell. What the hell? I don't know. He directed that action Aladdin movie, didn't he? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I didn't did not watch it. I didn't either. <laughs> um, I mean, of course, it's a it's a cliche, and there again, it's it's really obvious. But uh, seeing Star Wars on the big screen when I was in third grade was pretty fucking huge. Yeah, I didn't even want to bring up Star Wars just because it's such a, you know, a, a global influencer. That was a, Star Wars came out the same year as Smokey and the Bandit, and that was also that was also a huge influence on my life. Obviously. <laughs> what do we have here? <laughs> those are those are death rabbits. They're, they're rabbit. They're death rabbits. <laughs> Joel, Joel says Madonna ruins everything. Yeah, she she ruined Guy Ritchie. I, I do like the uh, the Madonna. You know, like a lot of the celebs did. You know, trying trying to put everybody at ease and and all that when all this started. Madonna uh, made a video of her uh, in the bathtub uh, full of rose petals and talked about how we needed to social distance. That 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 definitely made me feel terrific. I tell you what, uh, I was I was having a really hard day, and I watched that, and everything was fine. Yeah, and and now it it, it hits even closer to home because I've I've got twelve hundred dollars. So, so I know 
That's a lot of that's a lot of JW Dant, Corey. I know. I know what it's like to be Madonna now. I've got twelve hundred dollars. Uh, Austin, uh, yes, Austin, I think you're right. Yeah, I think Matthew Vaughn did do that shitty Robin Hood movie that nobody went to see. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, he, you know, he did those Sherlock Holmes movies, which were were uh, popular, I guess. But So what else is going on, y'all? That was a great question, Adam. Yeah. Actually made me think. Yeah, and, and loved hearing y'all's answers. And we can keep talking about that if y'all want to continue, whatever. Yeah. Tell us what movies made you the person you are. Yeah. Lou, Lou. Tell us tell us what music Lou, made you a fan of Lou Jaton. Lou, Lou Jaton don't care what we do. <laughs> yeah, I mean I mean I mean the big one to me is Fugazi. Like I mean they're my favorite band musically and just they're they're smart people. And then the, you know Oh, Yeah, mine, uh, um, R.E.M., The Clash, Elvis Costello, Prince. Those are probably... Stop everything. That's, that's, my, that's my top four. Stop everything. Alex wants to know our reaction to the Dune picks. Um, well, uh, I'll have to stand up and show you my gigantic boner, Alex, because I'm here for it. Yeah, uh, very excited. You know, that was the first one, the, the Timothy Chalamet as, uh, as Paul there, they released. And then they... Re I didn't save them all, but they released a bunch of them. I think it looks great. I think the production, the design, everything looks amazing. I, I love Dune. Somebody was asking me what Dune is like. I was like, it's Star Wars and Game of Thrones before there were Star Wars and Game of Thrones, but it's mixed together, you know. Absolutely. It's got uh, it's got some of the... Uh... It's got the, like the whole like the hero's journey from Star Wars, but the political intrigue of Game of Thrones. That's a great way to describe it. Yeah, and it's it's dark. Missy says, Missy says, uh, Rage Against the Machine and, and Beastie Boys, Paul's Boutique. Beastie Boys was a big, big, big changer for me too. Uh, for me, Beastie Boys and uh, Run DMC both were huge. Being at, that was one of the that was one of the cool things about being a teenager in the eighties. We got to. Got to watch the birth of hip hop. That was fucking awesome. It's super cool. The, the only like I like Rage Against the Machine when they came out, but it's what came out of Rage Against the Machine that I hate because rap rock was you know. <laughs> By the way, Corey, did you see? Um, you were mentioned earlier, like the celebrities uh, making videos to try to make uh, make the quarantine easier on us lesser folk. Um, the lead singer of Puddle of Mud recorded himself doing a, uh, Nirvana's About a Girl. I, I, I saw it. I sent it. We, we were we were supposed to do a, uh, before she went down, we were doing that uh, Nirvana fundraiser thing, and I sent it to my bandmates, and they were just, <laughs> it, it's disgusting. It's so bad. I mean, check out, Johnny, Johnny looks badass. Johnny? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm horned up for this goddamn movie. Here, I am too, and here, here's exactly what's going to happen, Corey. The movie's going to come out. It's going to it's gonna make a shit ton of money on its opening weekend, and then it's going to disappear because the average American moviegoer <laughs> is going to sit there going, what the fuck is this? Why aren't there more, like, thrilling space adventures? Yeah. Well, <laughs> dude, like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the David Lynch version, too. Like, I watch it way too much, and, uh, like, it, it, the same thing happened with that. It's, it's way heady sci-fi, and it's, it's it, it, the, the, the themes that those, that story covers is, is really some wacky out there shit. So, you know, it's, it's very heavily, very heavily political, very heavily drug-related. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the same thing happened with, you know, Villa knew when his, his Blade Runner movie. I mean, he he made a the best possible Blade Runner sequel he could, and it failed pretty miserably. Didn't make a lick of money. Yeah. Uh, opening weekend prediction. I think. <clears throat> I, I don't know what's a what's a good opening weekend now. The the ultimate opening weekend would be the uh, the most money it could make would be which would be twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> That's my, 
<laughs> it will make twelve hundred dollars in its opening weekend. <laughs> like I said, I don't I don't know the number figure, but I think it'll be number one at the box office the weekend it opens, and then it'll just it'll drop to like number five because I, I, I doubt it. It'll even do that because it comes out in December, and that, there's going to be a ton of like Disney shit. It, it, I guarantee it's going to be a loaded month. Austin said, and Corey will decide a year later. He wasn't crazy about it. <laughs> I'm very aware of. I'm very aware. <laughs> Austin, there's Austin again. Good, good Austin is, is here. He, he's joined us once again. Let's see what's happening with him. Hey, Austin, are you familiar with Dune? Doom? No, not, not Doom. Dune with an N. You know, melange, the spice. No, I, I, I'm not allowed to. We don't put salt and peppers to sin. <laughs> Come on, now. I'm, so, salt and pepper is flavor. No, you gotta have salt and pepper. No, sir. No, sir. It, it, the, the Lord wants everything to be bland for us, says Mama. So there's no salt and pepper on like your mashed potatoes or. Oh no. Anything. Oh, you, we can't mash no taters in our house, no, sir. Okay, I'm probably going to regret this, but um, why does your mom not like mashed potatoes? We got we got to eat them raw. It, mashing is mashing is sexual. That's what people do. They mash. I, I, actually, I think smash is a more appropriate term. But uh, you know, there's there's nothing sexual about mashing potatoes, Austin. Come on, man. Mr. Todd, Mr. Todd. What? You told me I should have a talk with my mama, and I did, Mr. Todd. Well, how did that go? She whipped me with a cat of nine tails. The bat she could just whip me on Easter Sunday. Um, I had to get whipped again with the cat and I tail. You know, I've I've got the number for social services if you need it, buddy. I mean, <laughs> unless unless of course you that you you liked it. No, we can't. Have, we don't got a telephone in our house. The only person you should be calling is is Lord. And and uh, how do you how do you call Lord? You scream into your pillow when Mama's there to see you. All right. Um, if anybody uh, who's watching has any questions for Austin, I'm fresh out. I ain't supposed to answer no questions, neither. <sighs> Mom. Mama did let me watch a television program once or twice, though. What did you uh, What did you watch on the television, buddy? Well, she she let me watch Powerpuff Girls, but 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 she made I have to fast forward through the through the parts that had girls in it. So you saw roughly twenty five seconds of Powerpuff Girls. I ain't, I ain't supposed to see things like that. Not supposed to see girls at all, huh? She don't. She don't want me getting no ideas. What kind of ideas does she think you're gonna get? Are you? Does she think if you watch girls, you're gonna start mashing taters? Oh no! Can we get another suggestion from the audience of a place? Hold on. Hold on. There's a there's a question in the question box here. Let's see. Oh, there's a couple. Oh. 
Adam, a uh, question for Austin. How badly do you regret sending Corey that pick? <laughs> uh, Misty, Misty wants to know if we've been to Star Wars land at Disney. We have not. No. But it doesn't matter. When we conquer Florida, when Kentucky conquers Florida, we're moving that shit to Marshall County. I don't know if you saw Hell yeah. I don't know if you know this or not, Corey, but uh, when you go to the new Star Wars land at uh, Disney World, they do let you build your own lightsaber, but uh, they're all yellow, and you have to change your name to Skywalker. I mean, I, mean, I, I think most people would probably be fine with that. <laughs> Austin's frantically trying to find somewhere to buy a hat. <laughs> I mean, Austin, here, here's where, like, the, the the fake Austin and Austin are kind of the same. They don't understand the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Which for those of you who don't know Austin, he's uh, he's one of our best friends. He's uh, appeared on the Ingenious Bastards podcast numerous times. He was he was with us on our uh, Dungeons and Dragons quest. He was he was indeed. I like it. Like he's he's got a he's got a beautiful wife. He's a he's a local filmmaker. He's very accomplished. And yeah, I mean he's, that that is that is his voice though. You <laughs> nailed the voice, Corey. Yeah, he sounds exactly like that. Yeah. I mean, I mean he's a, he's a not attractive, but he's he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> There, there's some more uh, Dune action. There's the. <laughs> I was actually reading about this today. I, uh, I actually had forgotten that they like market, marketed Dune action figures like it was going to be like the it was going to be like the new Star Wars, and kids were like, you know, oh, I have to have all of the Harkonnens. That, that's exactly they they for real thought. A David Lynch version of a crazy book like Dune was they that is legit what they thought they thought it was going to be the next Star Wars. Well, I mean, what they they weren't alone in thinking that though because Lucas did ask David Lynch to direct Return of the Jedi. Oh, Lynch was I mean hotter than you. I mean, he was. Every, everybody wanted him for everything. What what I can't understand though is that at that point David Lynch had directed Eraserhead and The Elephant Man. And people, based on those two movies, people were scrambling for him to direct a space opera. <laughs> he did it. How does that happen? I mean, I'm glad he did. It's a great movie. Yeah. There's, there's Kristen. Hello, Kristen. <laughs> yes, that is your sister, Kristen, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> what if, what, I wish there was a third Wallace. A non a non binary one. <laughs> named, named Pearl. What else is happening? What else you want to talk? You got a record you want to talk about or anything? I do. I have a uh, one today. Let's do it. Um, for some reason, I don't know. I don't know if you can see this or not, but Adam's question is like covering up my half of the screen. Oh, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Can you still see? I can see you. I just didn't know if you could see me. I can see you fine. I, I, I don't see his question on there. Okay. It's just showing up on my end for some oh. weird-ass reason. But anyway, here's Todd's record roundup. Oof. I just got one today. It's in the popular CD format. You know, you spend a lot of time quarantining, isolating. You need some good music to listen to. And uh, tonight I have chosen an epic. Okay. This is the Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, and the Infinite Sadness. It's a two-record set. It's four hours long. I've never been able to make it through the whole thing. There's, but perhaps you will. I won't. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, I am so upset I don't have – because I've got a bunch of uh, – 
uh, shit, what's his name? I'm totally blanking. Billy Corgan. I've got I've got a ton of Billy Corgan pictures on my phone because number one, there's the the picture of him sat on a roller coaster, which is one of my all time favorites. And then he's appeared on the cover of uh, the local Chicago Cat magazine like three times. Like like he's he's also made more than one appearance on the Alex Jones program. He sucks. He sucks really bad. Like. I, I, I long for those days where we didn't know that much about about our betters, the celebrities. God damn it! The internet, the internet told us a lot of things we did not need to know. Yeah, Smashing Pumpkins is fine. Like they had some good stuff. So like, like Gish. I, I loved Gish when it came out. Sammy's Dream was great, and then he got a little he got a little too big for his britches. This what a lot of people don't know is every note on this album was played by his tears. I don't doubt that. Poor James Iha. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if you got uh, if you got four hours to spare and you like being sad. I don't think anybody needs any help in that department right now. Okay, uh, it's, there, there, this is a beautiful coincidence that just happened because we mentioned James Iha, of course, the guitarist from Smashing Pumpkins. Did you know he was in a super group? I did. Let me let me tell you about Tinted Windows. Uh, <laughs> featuring James I from Smashing Pumpkins there. You got Bunny Carlos there in the left. He's from uh, uh, Cheap Trick. Um, Adam Schlesinger, who's on the right, um, he, he was from Fountains of Wayne. He just died uh, from coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, Fountains of Wayne were fantastic. Uh, but, 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 but the gentleman right here, that's Taylor Hansen from the popular group Hansen, writers of the song Mbop. Mm yeah, so that's Tinted Windows. That that was a super group that came out sometime in the 2000s. It's a bizarre group of people. I'm going to I did not listen to their music because I, 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 I can't. I can't do that anymore. They named the band Tinted Windows because they were all embarrassed to be seen driving away from the studio. With Taylor Hansen. What a weird group of people. I don't know how that happens. Like, we're, like I know Taylor Hansen. So, Taylor, I also know the Hansen boys are also big craft beer fans because they made a mmm hop beer at one point. They, that's, not, that's not me being a, a dropping a shitty dad joke. That's a real thing. <laughs> it, it exists. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said super group. That's a little complimentary, isn't it? I, I got. I'm gonna. I gotta agree with you, Kristen. That is. Uh, I mean, but compared to Hollywood vampires, <laughs> I mean, you you put me up at the wall. I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna listen to Tinted Windows over Hollywood Vampires day of the week, or the oh all damn day or the circle. God. Here, let's let's think about Dune again. <laughs> mm. God. I'm I'm trying to imagine what tinted windows would sound like because I mean the the Hansons the Hansons are just it, it it's just hooky sugary sweet pop music. Yeah. Um, which. Which is kind of also uh, Adam Schlesinger's thing. I mean, I, I dug Fountains of Wayne. Uh, the boy could write some hooks. I mean, it was all very, uh, very hook filled and melodic and easy to sing along to. Um, I, I, I never, I never heard that band. Uh, somebody, somebody asked a question. And I couldn't see who it was. It kind of faded out to uh, ask us to recommend some comedy specials. Um, oh, well, anyway, then you got then you got uh, James. Uh, you got James on the bass there. <laughs> Todd, Todd's like, no, we're not doing that. 
<laughs> no, we will. I just I'm, I'm going somewhere with okay, this. Okay, okay, okay. And then and then you got uh, then you got Bun you got Bunny Carlos playing the drums. So you take all that and put it together, and I'm sure Tended Wintos probably sounds just like Cheap Trick. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So what was the question? I'm sorry. They, know, they were, <laughs> they were uh, I, I, it might have been Alex asking to recommend some uh, uh, comedy specials. Oh, um, there's a there's a bunch of new ones out that I uh, haven't watched. Uh, um, I, I got Gary. Uh, Gary Goldman's Great Depression is amazing. Who is it? Gary Gary Oldman? Yes. Who is it? Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman. Goldman, Corey. Oh, I thought Gary. I thought Gary Coleman passed. <laughs> nope, still alive. There was, I've, I've got so there. There was a. There used to be a, a limousine company in Paducah called Coleman, and all their license plates said said Coleman, Coleman one, Coleman through ten, or whatever, and. Um, Anytime it, people would always bring this up for whatever reason, like, well, oh, their license plate say Coleman. And I would always tell people that if Gary Coleman owned the limousine service. <laughs> uh, my other recommendations would be anything uh, that any of John Mulaney's uh, stand up specials, they're all great. Pat Oswalt. I, I, I will, uh, I, I will throw one out and it's, uh, I, I don't know that it was ever released on video or anything, but, um, Paul F. Tompkins' "Impersonal" is one one of the best comedy albums I've ever heard, and uh, it's definitely it's definitely on all the streaming services. But um, it's amazing. Like some of his Paul F. Tompkins will do a lot of like improv stuff, but this is like a le legit written set, and it's one of my favorite favorite comedy albums ever. Um. <laughs> We, we talked a little bit last night about, uh, for whatever reason, uh, Eddie Murphy's Delirious came up. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, was, uh, that was a big one. That was a big one for me back in the day. We, we uh, like in, uh, in middle school, we quoted the fuck out of Eddie Murphy Delirious. That was just a bunch of honky white boys just walking around talking like Eddie Murphy for about a year. Yeah. I like Todd Berry a lot. Oh, Todd Berry's fantastic. Um, I also like uh, uh, Anthony Jeselnik. If you can find any of his specials, they're amazing. And uh, Doug Stanhope is also very, very funny. I'm trying to remember the Todd Berry. I think it's called like Medium Effort or Medium. So I, I, I can't remember what it what it's called, but it's really good. And you know, if you can find any of Sinbad's stand-up specials, I'm sure they're still out there. Check one of those out. And and still, the one of the greatest Twitter follows of all time is uh, uh, George Wallace. Like, Absolutely, George Wallace is better at Twitter. The only person who's better at Twitter than George Wallace is uh, Drill. <laughs> For sure, like George Wallace's stand-up is 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 very funny, but like. His Twitter game is just ridiculous. Uh, Adam says, Spicy Honey on Netflix by Todd Berry is great. I haven't seen it. He, did, he also did a, a, a tour. He'll do tours where he only does crowd work, where he just walks into the crowd and talks to people. And that's really – I know that was a, a Netflix uh, – I don't think – Missy, I don't think Cat Stevens is a stand-up comic, is he? I'm pretty sure his name is uh, Yusuf Islam now too. I think. I was I was about to say I, I think I think Allah does not smile upon stand up comedy. No, he doesn't. He does not allow it. He, it's forbidden. Yeah. Maybe she's talking about Cat Williams. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alex wants to know the top five Wallaces of all time: Adam Wallace, Kristen Wallace, their mother Glowworm, um, and then uh, I guess uh, Kristen's husband. William Wallace. Uh, what, George Wallace? <laughs> William Wallace and George Wallace. That's it. <laughs> what, else, what else is happening? There was a, there was a, uh, 
<laughs> Rusty Wallace. God damn it. Is it is that a fucking NASCAR driver? <laughs> yes. Boy. <laughs> Uh, David Cross had a stand-up special uh, a couple of years ago that was really good. For, just for once, Misty, move outside of Marshall County for like a month. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I can tell Misty's been into the ET and RC, which she once told me is her favorite drink, which is early times and RC Cola. The county is that sounds like he'll get you fucked up. <laughs> Number two, Miller Light Car says Joel. If I'm not mistaken, Rusty Wallace was also ironic that his name is Rusty because I believe he's one of the few gingers who's ever participated in NASCAR. Yeah, and he, uh, uh oh. Uh, he's he's rumored to be playing uh, Rusty in the uh, reboot of National Lampoon's Vacation, too. <laughs> is, sh is shit fucking up? Yes. It's about that time, I think, Corey. Uh, 